this is example 4-3 where we're filling a tank so you can see here we have this uh, tank it's a cylinder now we give it the diameter and we have two pipes that are flowing in at a and at b and then we have a pipe flowing out at c and we we're asked if there's no water in the tank to start out with how long does it take to fill up the entire tank now to do that we have to make um, two small assumptions uh, the first one is that um, as soon as there's water at the bottom of this plate we'll get the full outflow out of c which is a little bit of a stretch but we'll do it anyway and then we're also going to assume that we start counting um, as soon as the first water hits the floor right so we already have these established columns uh, coming down so let's start with drawing ourselves a free body diagram right so let's start with our uh, cylinder here maybe our, our tank right we have an outflow here so it's going to be a control surface so that's our overall tank now for our control volume obviously it's going to change over time right as the water fills our, our control volume is going to get bigger so we already know we have a deforming control volume but if we draw this in we can say kind of comes up to the water surface then goes up where the column of, column of water is and the same at a All right so maybe just to make clear right so this is all this is all water all right what do we else do we say we can say that will count our y going upward positive from here what's at a given time y is just goes up to this water surface and then we can look at our control surfaces so we'll have a surface at a pointing outward positive then we'll have one at b again outward positive and one at c also outward positive so all, all positives now the velocities here the velocity is going down so this would be vb same at a um, but here at c it's going out so we can say this is vc so this would be our our control volume and our control surfaces we already said that we're having a deforming uh, control volume what else do we know we know it's an incompressible fluid it's water incompressible fluid and it is steady flow right the velocities don't change over time but the control volume does steady flow and lastly in uh, across our surfaces we're going to assume that we can use average velocities right otherwise we'd have to be given some information about what those um, velocity profiles would look like <clears throat> all right then let's write our full continuity equation that would be d dt integral over the control volume of rho dv plus integral over the control surfaces of rho v times dA is equal to zero now what did we say we say it's incompressible which means that our uh, densities don't change so we can just cancel them out that's good um, we do know that our volume is going to be changing our control volume so we have to leave that in so we can write dv dt right the change of volume and time and then if we use average velocities we can just do our qa for each of those flows All right so for a the velocity in the area are in diff opposite directions so we get v a minus v a times 
AA, same at B, VB times AB, and then at VC, we get they're in the same direction. So plus VC times AC. And that, of course, also has to be equal to zero. All right, so we're given all the A's, we're given all the velocities. We now need to figure out what our V is. So we need to figure out, we need to write the volume that's inside of our control volume in terms of this, uh, this depth Y. Okay, how do we roll well, for the bottom part? That's easy, right? It's just Y times uh, the, the, the area. So we can say V would be pi over four times diameter, let's say tank T squared, uh, and then times the height. In our case, the height, of course, is just Y. Okay, good, so we have the Y in there. Now we're also gonna say that these two columns of water that are coming down are part of the control volume, so we have to add them in as well. So let's add another uh, measure into here. All right, we know that this whole thing is two meters. All right, that means we can just say two meters, like the height of these columns is gonna be two meters minus Y. So we can say plus, oops, let's go back to blue. Not make this more confusing than it already is. Plus pi over four times d a squared and now times two meters minus y and then of course the same for the other side right like the other column so four a pi over four times d b squared two meters minus y all right, and then all we can go ahead and plug all of these things in. All of these are pi over four. So maybe let's pull pi over four uh, all the way to the, to the, oh, not all of them. Yeah, all of them is gonna be pi over four, so we can pull that out. Pi over four times, and then we'd be left with dt squared times y plus two meters uh, times dA squared, if you multiply these out, minus y times dA squared, plus two meters times dB squared, minus y times dB squared. Oops, it's not forget to close our bracket here is equal to pi over 4 now if we combine the terms that have y in it all right then we would get dt squared minus da squared minus db squared times y and then we get the two terms that are involving two meters so we'd have dA squared plus dB squared times two meters. All right, that's just combining terms to make it a little easier to write. Um, so that is our volume. Now, if we're gonna write our dV dt, right, so dV dt is then d dt of this whole thing of oh, another another type of bracket here to get the pi in there and then dt squared minus da squared minus d b squared y plus d a squared plus d b squared times two meters and what can we say? Well, if we look back at the last term, the dA, that's the 
surface or it's the diameter of the flow coming in at a db is that uh, is the same for b neither of those are going to change with time two meters is also a constant so this whole thing does not change all right so that's that's good um so we can we're just left with the front part so this will be equal to uh then what else we can look in here the, the only thing that's changing is is the y Right, all these are constants, so this would be equal to pi over 4 times that bracket dt squared minus da squared minus db squared times dy dt. That would be our dv dt term. What do we need that for? Well, we needed that up here. All right, so now we can go ahead and we can plug that back in to our uh, continuity equation up there, All right? So that maybe just as a reminder was zero is equal to dv over dt minus va times aa minus vb times ab plus vc times ac. So if we plug in our the dv dv that we just calculated, right? That'd be pi over four times dt squared minus da squared minus db squared. It's good that there's not more flows coming in. Um, all that times dy dt, and then the rest here, right? So, write this a little more compact minus va times aa minus vb times ab plus vc times ac all of that is still equal to zero okay based on that of course we can solve this for dy dt so that means dy dt is then equal to uh, all of these with the sign changed divided by the bracket and the uh, pi over 4. So that's then VA times AA plus VB times AB minus VC times AC divided by pi over 4 times dt squared minus da squared minus db squared. <clears throat> All right, so we have that. Now we can write all of our areas up there. We can write those out. Next line to have some space, right? So that'd be va times pi over 4 times d a squared plus v b times pi over 4 times d b squared minus v c times pi over 4 times d c squared there we go make sure we don't forget anything divided by pi over 4 dt squared minus da squared minus db squared and of course the pi over 4 cancels out all around so that means we're left with va times da squared plus VB times DB squared minus VC times DC squared divided by DT squared minus DA squared minus DB squared. All right. So we have all this. Now, if we want to get our T, right, then we'll have to integrate. So we can rewrite this as dy is equal to this entire block here, which is a constant. va dA squared plus vb 
db squared minus vc dc squared divided by dt squared minus da squared minus db squared dt and then we can integrate on both sides <coughs> and then plug in the numbers all right so if i integrate i would integrate on the one side zero to two meters right that was the entire height dy and then again all of this front here is a constant so we can pull it out you don't have to put it part of the integration va times da plus vb times db minus vc times dc squared all those are squared oops forgot the squares divided by dt squared minus da squared minus d b squared times integral from 0 to t of dt so that's both of those are easy to integrate only not much there to integrate right so we're left with two meters is equal to this whole bunch once again should find some copy and paste tool here plus v b times d b squared minus v c times d c squared divided by d t squared minus d a squared minus d b squared all right but what is that we want well we want to have it as one oop times t let's not forget that very important right so we want to have the t so we can solve all this for t and so we'll have two divided by all of this for dividing by this and multiply so we have two meters times dt squared minus da squared minus d b squared divided by va times da squared plus vb times db squared minus vc times dc squared all right and that is now all that we need right all all these uh, values are knowns so we can plug them in hope we can fit that onto a single line all right so it'll be two meters times now the outflow of the or the tank itself the diameter of the tank 1.5 meters so that'd be one point let's do a square bracket here 1.5 meter squared minus a was a hundred and that was 200 so that'd be minus 0 0.1 meter squared minus 0 0.2 meters squared divided by now the velocity at a was 2.5 and at b 1.5 so that would be 2.5 meters per second times 0 0.1 meter squared plus vb was 1.5 meter squared times 0 0.2 meter squared minus vc was 0 0.57 and 300 minus 0 0.375 meters per second times 0 0.3 meter squared there we go if we put that in we get 251.42857 seconds or if you round it 251 seconds 
So it takes just about four minutes or a little bit more than four minutes to fill up this big tank based on the two inflows and the one outflow. Now there's an alternative approach that we could take. Um, we could just say, if we know what the entire volume is that we need to fill and we know what the inflows and the outflows are, right? then if we take the total flow, right? so basically taking the inflows minus the outflows and then dividing the volume by whatever that, that uh, volumetric discharge is, we should get the time. Right, so we can let's try that out here. All right, so we know that the total volume once it's filled, right, would be V is equal to pi over four D tank squared times H. That's our total volume. Now if we think about our inflows and outflows, right, then we can say Q total. Would be QA coming in plus QB coming in minus QC going out. All right, and that, if we write that out, all right, is then VA times AA, so times pi over 4 DA squared plus VB times pi over 4 DB squared minus vc times pi over 4 dc squared or if you pull out the pi over 4 pi over 4 times va da squared plus vb db squared minus vc DC squared. Well, that looks very familiar. It's good because we'd want to come up with more, more or less the same, the same setup. So then we can say that the entire volume would be the total flow, so in, in minus out, times T. Right? If I have this discharge and I let it go for a certain amount of time, I should get this with this volume. So I can say my T is equal to V over Q total. And that is then V we figured out up there is pi over four times DT squared times H, where H is like the overall two meters. And the Q total we figured out was pi over four and then VA times DA squared plus VB times DB squared minus VC times DC squared. Which of course means we can cancel out those pi over four terms. So we would get DT squared times H divided by VA DA squared plus VB DB squared minus VC DC squared. And what are we missing here? No, we're not. I think we have everything. So we can plug in values. So that would be uh, 1.5 meters squared times two meters divided by our velocity here we can just basically 2.5 0 0.1 2.5 meters per second times 0 0.1 meter squared plus 1.5 meters per second times 0 0.2 meter squared minus c so that was 0 0.75 meters per second times 0 0.3 meters squared and that gives us 257.143 seconds if we round it 
250 seconds. Now, does that mean we made an error somewhere? Right? One version gives us 251, the other one gives us 257. Well, if we go back to our control volume and think about how we set this up, right? we said for the setup that we have here, we start counting when the water hits the bottom of the tank, right? When we have these first columns kind of going all the way down, right? This would be the beginning. Now, if this is our assumption, this is different than what we just did, right? Because we already have this additional volume. We already have a volume of water inside of our tank when we start, right? That's why it makes sense that in the, the simpler approach that, that we just did, right, we just take the, the volume divided by the discharge, um, that that gives us a longer time because it does not take into account that we have these columns of water in there. So that's why we get a slightly different number, but they're pretty close. And, you know, the, the one, the simple one is larger, which fits to what we see um, from our assumptions. So I think we're probably pretty good. So again, 251 seconds to fill up this tank.